Testing.
Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in saying the Gloria on page 356. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you by their martyrdom, grant that your church, instructed by their teaching and example, and knit together in unity by your Spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. I am giving you this commission in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who is coming to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearance and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready to do it, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Correct, confront, and encourage with patience and instruction. There will come a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching, they will collect teachers who say what they want to hear because they are self-centered. They will turn their back on the truth and turn to myths. But you must keep control of yourself in all circumstances. Endure suffering. Do the work of a preacher of the good news and carry out your service fully. I am already being poured out like a sacrifice to God and the time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight, finished the race, and kept the faith. At the last, the champion's wreath that is awarded for righteousness is awaiting for me. The Lord, who is the righteous judge, is going to give it to me on that day. He's given it not only to me, but also to all those who have set their heart on waiting for his appearance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 87, found in your prayer book on page 71, 711. We will recite the psalm in unison. On the holy mountain stands the city who was founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of our God. I turn to Egypt and Babylon and those who know me, whole Philistines, Tyre, Ethiopia, and Zion, the Lebanon. Of Zion, it shall be said, everyone was born in her, and the Most High himself shall sustain her. The Lord will recall this many ways the people. These also were born here. The singers and the dancers will say, all my flesh claims her in me.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure you that when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and another will tie your belt and lead you where you don't want to go. He said this to show the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. A celebration in challenging times. It's been hard to be away from the sacrament, hasn't it? It's hard to be away from this beautiful space. And who knows if it'll have to be that way again or when everyone will feel safe enough to return. Who knows what will be different for St. Paul's and the church at large moving forward. On this feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, our second patronal feast of the year, I can't help but wonder, what would Peter and Paul have to say about all of this? What would they have to say about all the challenges and all the adversity that we face today? Peter and Paul were friends. They were colleagues. And they were both deeply flawed people. Paul, once a zealot who sought to murder Christians, empowered to become the church's greatest missionary. Peter, a denier and betrayer of Christ, given the keys to the kingdom and the strength to lead and speak boldly. They served the church together. They both suffered for their beliefs and they shared in a martyr's death for the gospel they preached. They argued passionately side by side for the inclusion of Gentiles into the faith at the Council of Jerusalem described in the book of Acts. They were brothers in Christ. They didn't always see eye to eye, though. In fact, we know that at least once they really had it out. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul describes publicly calling Peter out in Antioch. He writes, I opposed him to his face. Because he was wrong. He had been eating with the Gentiles before certain people came from James. But when they came, he began to back out and separate himself because he was afraid of the people who promoted circumcision. I said to Peter in front of everyone, If you, though you're a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you require the Gentiles to live like Jews? Whew. To his face in public. Harsh, Paul, harsh. Paul could be harsh at times. But Paul obviously felt like it was important for leaders to hold each other accountable. That tendency makes a strong appearance in the second letter to Timothy that we heard just a few minutes ago. Paul's writing to Timothy, who's acting as a representative of Paul in the church at Ephesus. He encourages Timothy, preach the word. Be ready to do it whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Correct, confront, 
and encourage with patience and instruction. There will come a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. They will collect teachers who say what they want to hear because they're self-centered. They will turn back to the truth, turn back on the truth and turn to myths. But you must keep control of yourself in all circumstances. Now that sounds like the Paul who confronted Peter. Paul could have handled it more appropriately, but you know what? That's true friendship. Friends, real friends, are the ones who will tell you when you have spinach in your teeth. As Dr. Jean from our Center for Counseling and Education teaches, communication always has to be honest, direct, and appropriate. And Paul was honest. Paul was certainly direct. Sometimes, though, not so appropriate. He had a hot streak because he was human. But he taught us something important by his courage about how to truly care for one another in community. Be honest, be direct, be appropriate. Call out the spinach in your friend's teeth, but do it with love. That's Christian community, which is the opposite of the kind of throwaway culture we live in today. You're very quick to unfriend cancel and cut off people we disagree with these days. But that's not true Christian accountability. It's certainly not true belonging and care, which are the staples of Christian community, the ABCs of Christian community, accountability, belonging, and care. Peter and Paul had their disagreements, but they stayed in relationship because they shared identity and mission in Christ. And Peter even had his disagreements with Jesus himself, Jesus showed him the ultimate example of reconciliation and forgiveness. You remember the story of Peter pulling Jesus aside and saying, Jesus, this dying on the cross thing you keep talking about, that's not how the Messiah works. And you remember what Jesus said to Peter? Get behind me, Satan, for you are putting your mind on earthly things and not on heavenly things. And poor Peter, <laughs> always getting fussed at for backsliding. And it wouldn't be the last time. Remember Peter denying Jesus three times before the cock crowed? But Jesus never threw Peter away. In the reading from John, we see how Jesus deals with Peter post-denial. He could have really let him have it, right? Instead, he has breakfast with him. Peter denied Jesus three times, so Jesus asks him if he loves him three times and reminds him that if that love is real, then he's got a job to do. And it won't be an easy one either. Jesus tells Peter, when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and another will tie your belt and lead you where you do not want to go. Life is tough enough, but disciples follow their teacher. And that often means the road I do not want to travel. That means honestly asking myself in tough situations, what do I least want to do here? Now, just because it's the thing you least want to do doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing. But when I think back on the toughest decisions of my life, the right decision was often the hardest decision and led me down the road I least wanted to travel. Peter was obviously a guy who did not like taking the hard road. He denied Jesus when it got hard. He denied his fellow Gentile believers when it got hard. He did not want to go down these roads. And Jesus knew it and rightly reminded him that this would be his greatest spiritual challenge moving forward. But here's the good news. Jesus knew Peter's weaknesses better than Peter did. He stuck with him. He loved him anyway. He forgave him anyway. And Peter eventually stepped up. He stepped up boldly. He even eventually faced death. The thing he was most afraid to do, he did. That may have been a hard life, but I can guarantee you this. Peter died the way Paul did, satisfied and confident that it was better to do the right thing than to do the easy thing. Remember the final words we heard from 2 Timothy? Paul's writing this from prison, remember, and you can hear his satisfaction, his joy. Paul wrote, the time of my death is near. 
I have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith. At last, the champion's wreath that is awarded for righteousness is waiting for me. The Lord, who is the righteous judge, is going to give it to me on that day. He's giving it not only to me, but also to all those who have set their heart on waiting for his appearance. How can we not be inspired by people who have showed us how to truly live meaningful lives that make a real difference? Peter and Paul showed us many things. And among them, how to fight for others the way that he fought for the Gentiles. The way they both fought for the Gentiles. How to live together in disagreement. How to fail. How to gain strength from Jesus to overcome our failures and our weaknesses. How to forgive. And maybe even more importantly, how to allow, our, allow ourselves to be forgiven by the risen Christ. In all of this, what Peter and Paul together teach us is how to embody the gospel message of new life in ourselves and in our community. These are difficult times. It was for times like these that the mission and message of Peter and Paul is needed the most. Preach the word, Paul said. Be ready to do it whether it's convenient or inconvenient. Keep control of yourself in all circumstances. Endure. And again, remember, Paul's writing this from jail. He's about to die and he knows it. But he's still doing the work and writing to Timothy and encouraging him. And he sounds joyful because he knows the upside down, counterintuitive gospel truth of reality. That whether we like it or not or can see it or not, that failure leads to growth. Rocky roads lead to green pastures, crosses lead to resurrection, always. These are challenging, troubling times. The kinds of times when we are most prone to question our faith. And ironically, they are exactly the kinds of times when the church and her people, people like Peter and Paul, have thrived the most. So what would they say if they were here today? I believe they'd say challenges, adversity, good. Now you can really live the gospel message. I saw a video recently of a leadership consultant, a former Navy SEAL named Jocko Willink. And I doubt he was thinking of Peter or Paul, but he was certainly channeling them in this clip. He tells this story. One of the guys who worked for me one day, he was telling me about something that was going off the rails. And as soon as he finished explaining to me, he said, I already know what you're going to say. And I asked, what am I going to say? And he said, you're going to say good. That's what you always say. When something is wrong or going bad, you just look at me and you say good. And I said, well, I mean it because that's how I operate. So I explained to him. That when things are going bad, there's going to be some good that will come from it. Oh, the mission got canceled? Good. We can focus on another one. Didn't get the new high-speed gear we wanted? Good. We can keep it simple. Didn't get promoted? Good. More time to get better. Didn't get the job you wanted? Good. Go out. Gain more experience. Build a better resume. Got injured? Good. Needed a break from training. Got beat? Good. We learned. Unexpected problems? Good. We have to figure out new solutions. That's it. When things are gonna be going bad, don't get bummed out, don't get startled, don't get frustrated. Just look at the issue and say, good. Sounds like Paul, right? Preach the word, whether it's convenient or inconvenient whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. What would that look like for us today? Pandemic? Good. Allows us to get creative. Economic challenges? Good. We can prioritize what's most important. National discord? Good. Pushes us to focus on our mission to restore all people to unity with God and each other. That message of good 
is one I think that the church internalized a long time ago. Why else would we have begun calling it Good Friday? Peter and Paul had their own Good Fridays in life and in their death. And by divine power at work through them in adverse circumstances, they changed the world. Just think what a church named after Paul could do right here, right now. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, beginning on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the martyrdom of Peter and Paul, who in life loved one another and in death rejoiced together, let us offer prayers to God who calls us all into his realm of glory responding, Kyrie eleison. With Peter and Paul and all witnesses to the gospel, let us pray. Kyrie eleison. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Morris, our bishop, Rob, Liz, and Ed, our priest, Gina, our school chaplain, Melissa, aspirant for holy orders, Allison, candidate for holy orders, for all who minister in Christ and for all the holy people of God, let us pray. Kyrie eleison. For the church throughout the world and the faithful in every place, especially the clergy and people of Mount Olivet Episcopal Church, New Orleans, our companion diocese of Tohoku, Japan, and all the churches of the Holy Land, let us pray. Kyrie eleison. For the leaders of all the nations, especially President Trump, Governor Edwards, and Mayor Cantrell, for all those active in the uniformed services and all in authority, let us pray. Kyrie eleison. For mercy, justice, and peace among all peoples of the earth, let us pray. Kyrie eleison. For the dying and the dead, especially Emil, let us pray. Kyrie eleison. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, remembering Pat and Clyde, Michael, 
Christina, Holland, Jack, Ethren, Jane, Sheila, Heather, Jim and Deborah, Susan, Mike, Kylie, Chad, Harold, Ken and Donna, Jessica, Brian, Max and Ian, Kay, Judy, Tori, Ruth, Helen, Devin, Phil, Elsa, Philip, Anna, Pam, Mary, Vic, Jamie, Claire, Paul, Sue, Dolores, Jean, Ryan, Patrick, Brent, Jack, Shelley, Riley, Judson, Chris, Robert, Catherine, Melda, Ted, Nancy, Margaret, Elizabeth, Stephanie, Ann, Jesse, Henry, Audrey, Harvey, Jan and Ralph, Eugene, Nan, August, Patty, Nathaniel, Kathleen, Harris, Emily and Tara, Rosemary, and Larry and Carl, and all those who are ill with COVID-19, let us pray. Kyrie eleison. As we celebrate the founding of our nation on this Independence Day weekend, let us give thanks. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for the natural majesty and beauty of this land. They restore us, though we often destroy them. Heal us. We thank you for the great resources of this nation. They make us rich, though we often exploit them. Forgive, Forgive us. We thank you for the men and women who have made this country strong. They are models for us, though we often fall short of them. Inspire us. We thank you for the torch of liberty which has been lit in this land. It has drawn people from every nation, though we have often hidden from its light. Enlighten, Enlighten us. us. We thank you for the faith we have inherited and all its rich variety. It sustains our life, though we have been faithless again and again. Renew, Renew us. us. Help us, O Lord, to finish the good work here begun. Strengthen our efforts to blot out ignorance and prejudice and to abolish poverty and crime and hasten the day when all our people with many voices in one united chorus will glorify your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Using the form on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Welcome to the very heart of the life and mission of St. Paul's Episcopal Church. If you don't know it by heart, let's say together our mission statement. It's a, at the top of your bulletin if you have one with you. Growing in relationships, growing in service, 
growing in Christ. And to everyone who is joining us online today, we are glad that you are here. Welcome. Please check in in the comments and say hi and let us know that you are with us this morning. To all of you, welcome. We're very glad that you could make it this morning for our resumption of Holy Eucharist. And there are some instructions for how we're going to do this. It's all going to look a little bit different, but you know what that is? It's good. It gives us a way to think about it in a different way, right? So after the Eucharistic prayer, then Melissa, who will have sanitized her hands very well, is going to bring the trays down to this table that are in front of me. And Rodney, who is our usher, is going to help direct you to come forward. Make sure you're keeping six foot distance by family groups. If you're with a couple, couple or uh, you have children, you can all come up together. But whoever's going to grab the cup, sanitize your hands, and then just reach and grab one and go back to your seat. Don't consume at the table. Just grab your cup. It has a host in it. Bring it with you back to your seat. Okay? We're good so far? And then, once everyone has gotten their cup, then I will direct you and we'll all receive at the same time at our seats. Because you'll all have to take your mask off for a second or reach under it or whatever works for you to be able to consume. So we'll all do it at the same time. So just remember when you're coming forward, keep your physical distance, sanitize your hands. If you have young children, we recommend you take the cup for them and then take it back to your seat. We'll all consume together. Then hang on to your cup and... At the end of the service, when Rodney helps dismiss us from top to bottom, back to front, there's a basket out there, just drop your cup in it. It may have crumbs in it, and so we actually, and since they're paper cups, we will be able to burn them uh, respectfully, dispose of them in that way. So, everybody got it? Everybody got any questions? I know it's a little different. Just watch the person in front of you, and I'm sure that they will get it right and help you figure it out, too. Now, when you come up, you're going to notice an icon on the table. That is an icon of Jean d'Arc, also known to you as Joan of Arc. And it was written by Kristen Wheeler. Kristen, do you want to stand up for a second and just say hello? You're being shy now. You're going to be shy. So this is Kristen. Kristen is our new communications manager and has been for the last several months. So all the nice graphic stuff that you've seen posted around, whether it's in a bulletin or on Facebook or wherever it is, Kristen is the one who's been responsible for all that really good work. She is an incredibly talented artist and photographer and, 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 uh, and even an aspirant to the vocational diaconate. So we're very glad that Kristen is our communications manager and does such good work. And she uh, actually commissions icons like this. This is someone uh, commissioned this from her. And so I'm going to bless this icon this morning. And when you come up, take a look at it, remember Joan, and see some of the good work that Kristen does with the many gifts that God has granted her. So let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, manifested your glory in his flesh and sanctified the outward and the visible to be means to perceive realities unseen. Accept, we pray, this icon of Joan of Arc, and grant that as we look upon it, our hearts may be drawn to things which can be seen only by the eye of faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Any birthdays to recognize this morning? If it is your birthday, stand up for a birthday prayer. I know we have at least one, oh, two, three. Look at all these birthdays. For our birthdays, let us pray. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. You may be seated. Any anniversaries this morning? Aha. Aha. Wonderful. Let us pray for our anniversaries. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon these couples who celebrate their anniversaries and grant them your grace. 
that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their lives together may be a witness to your love and forgiveness, and that their homes may be havens of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary. You may be seated. And finally, travelers. Anybody traveling in the next week? For our travelers, let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Godspeed. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. with Eucharistic Prayer B, beginning on page 367, page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations, and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter, blessed Paul, blessed Jean d'Arc and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Please stand. Using the form on page 366, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Go forth now into the world in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. now our voices raise with the day with gladness God himself to joy and praise turns our human sadness joy that martyrs won their crown open heaven's portal from fear.